Okay, thank you very much. We have to keep straight in time, and so the ones who want to change to the other uh, session can do this now. And now we come to the second presentation. It's Male Manuela Hürlimann. She will present us the Schweizer Dialect Sammlung, Results, Learning, and Next Steps. I hope we will get here fast to the presentation. Hi everyone, so yeah, my name is Manuela. I work at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences and I'm also a member of the board of Swiss NLP. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here. It's uh, actually the first time I am talking about this project in a physical setting because we launched it, well, a year and a few months ago and all the presentations I ever gave about it were online. <laughs> so this is a nice change. Um, Okay, uh, here we go. Um, yeah, I will talk, first briefly introduce the project, Swiss Dialect Collection, or Schweizer Dialect Sammlung. Then um, I will give an update on what happened since last year, because we presented it as a brand new project at last year's Swiss text. I will talk about the SDS 200 corpus that Yannick mentioned in the presentation before. Um, it's a, a corpus we released very recently that is based on on the dialect collection data. I will very briefly touch on the speech-to-text experiments and results, um, and I will introduce a related project that is funded by the Swiss National Foundation on um, speech translation for Swiss dialects, and then I will close with an outlook and what we have learned so far during the project. So, um, yeah, the organizations behind the project are the Swiss, Swiss NLP, the University of Applied uh, Sciences and Arts, Northwestern Switzerland, and the Zurich University of Applied Sciences. And then we are supported by a range of partners who provided data, who supported us financially or by spreading the word, and you can see them uh, on here. So uh, the, this project takes place in the, in the space of speech to text translation from Swiss German speech, for example, ich go am 12 Uhr essen, to standard German transcript, ich gehe um 12 Uhr essen. That's the task we want to solve and the problem, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> the problem we have is that in order to do this we need data, ideally we need a large public data set and when we set out um, on this project, this data didn't exist. So we wanted to create it. Ah, okay, now all my emojis don't show, <laughs> that's a pity. Um, we figured we don't have the money to pay people to actually create this data for us. So either to create transcripts or to create recordings, whichever way around. Um, so we were thinking about what we can do and uh, the angle we're taking in Swiss dialect collection is to provide incentives via gamification and to go basically the crowdsourcing way, so to create a resource created by the Swiss population. Um, so yeah, we have this web application, which you will find at dialectsammlung.ch, and I will briefly show what it looks like. So there are sentences that um, in standard German that our users are asked to translate internally to their own dialect, so we're not collecting written Swiss German translations at this point, though it is in theory something we could do. Um, and then they click this microphone button that you see at the bottom and they record it. And they can listen to it as again uh, to verify whether it's correct, which as I noted when I was doing recordings is sometimes a good idea, because depending on, on the 
uh, tenses used in the sentence, for example, you really you, you want to check that you got it right. Um, and then there's an additional a quality control step, which also people who do not speak Swiss German can do, that's validating other people's recordings. So listening to recordings made by other users and checking whether they correspond with the text and also whether they are actually understandable and complete. So this is the project and um, what we have been up to. Let me show you what we said last year at Swiss Text. Um, so the goals are, are to crowdsource audio recordings from volunteers from the Swiss population using a web app. Um, and our target amount of audio to collect is 2,000 hours. And we figured that if the average person contributes five minutes, we need something like 24,000 people from all across German-speaking Switzerland. So what did we do? We raised a large um, PR campaign involving different media. You can see the most prominent screenshot. We were on national TV with the project on Schweiz Aktuell. We were in many newspapers, local radio stations. We had uh, prominent figures supporting the project, such as Simon Enstler that you see there, and also other comedians that spread the word for us. We ran, and that's the gamification I mentioned, we ran uh, two different competitions. The one on the left is an individual competition between users where they collect chocolate coins or shokitaler for their contributions. Um, and the one on the right is what we call the clash of the cantons or the Kampf der Kantone. Um, because we thought, you know, this competition between the cantons is kind of in the Swiss DNA. <laughs> and can we use that to get people to participate? And yeah, maybe I can say the top three of that uh, competition. Wallis was the winning canton, followed by Appenzell Innerroden, and then followed by Zurich. And obviously for this, we took into account the, the number of people in each canton and also the, the quality contributed. For the Clash of the Cantons, we also had this nice blog where we covered like day to day the different things that were happening. And this was a lot of fun. And where did this get us? We managed to reach 4,000 people who actually contributed data. And um, for the amount of hours, you will notice that there is a zero missing. <laughs> so we are at around 200 hours at the moment. And as for the competitions, uh, nearly 60% of all the recordings were made in, in the five weeks that the competitions were running. So now these 200 hours, we recently released them as SDS 200. And I'd like to just give you a few um, impressions of the corpus. So yeah, it's 200 hours, hence the name. It's almost 4,000 speakers from all the different cantons. It's something like 142,000 sentences. And uh, the length distribution is, I think, similar to what Yannick showed before, which is also due to the fact that the texts come from the same uh, distribution, so on average something like five seconds. And the vocabulary consists of around uh, 41,000 standard German words. And we distribute this with predefined splits into train, validation, and test. So that's kind of nice if you do experiments um, with it, we will be able to compare results. As for the dialect distribution, obviously not all cantons contributed the same. Uh, Ticino didn't contribute any, <laughs> not surprisingly, because well, there is one village here that uh, speaks German, but we didn't actually uh, source them, I suppose. Or we didn't target our campaign to them, let's say. <laughs> um, and then the canton that has most recordings in absolute numbers is Zurich, which is also the most populous canton. Um, and obviously also from the French-speaking cantons, we don't have data and we are, we don't have that much from Uri and Glarus, which have a low population as well. And um, yeah, the dialect 
distribution, if we compare it with the population in the cantons, it's often quite aligned, though Zurich contributed uh, much more in relation to, to the population. Um, yeah, that is, but we basically, one of the goals was to cover all the different cantons and that's something we managed. Um, now, I don't know if I can actually play these for you. Yeah, so that's, that is two samples. Um, I will not imitate the recordings for you, but you can try to imagine them. Um, or maybe I can actually ask, because both speakers are in the audience. <laughs> Manfred, would you speak the first sentence for us? <laughs> and Egon, what about the second one? I think that's interesting because I think when you recorded it, you actually used uh, a different verb, and I thought that was interesting. I think you were saying kabut mache, and that's one thing I, I noted that you actually really uh, that you changed. That's why I wanted to have it in the presentation. But it's yeah, it shows it shows the intricacy I think of this of this collection and of of dealing with the two languages because it's just there is no, no one correct way. Yeah, so this is the corpus. Um, it is available for both research and commercial purposes. And if you go to this URL, swissnlp.org slash datasets, you will find all the information pertaining to, to using it. Um, and if you want to know more about the corpus, then that's uh, a, our paper that is going to be published at LREC 2022, where the University of Applied Sciences and Arts Northwestern Switzerland is in the lead. It's called SDS 200, the Swiss German Speech to Standard German Text Corpus. So you'll find uh, way more information in there. Now, very briefly for the speech to text experiments and results. So basically these are results by also by FA Enve. Um, and it's based on XLSR. So it's, it's very similar to the model that uh, Yannick introduced so XLSR, for those that weren't uh, in the talk before, it's a multilingual self-supervised model by Facebook or Meta, um, pre-trained on nearly 130 languages and a massive amount of unlabeled speech data. And the most recent and largest version has two billion parameters. And there's a, a comprehensive paper if you want to know more about the details. Um, for the experiments next to SDS 200, uh, there was also the Swiss Parliament's corpus that was used, uh, both for training and for testing, and the additional test set is from the SNF project that I will introduce right after. For now, uh, what you need to know is that it's, it's a set of 35 hours where uh, seven dialects recorded five hours each with all the same prompts, so it's the most comparable and balanced, basically, of, of these um, sets. And the text uh, data that was fed into a 4 engram KNLM model, so that's <laughs> the one that uh, also Yannick mentioned, um, has a variety of different sources, which are listed on here. And just very briefly for the results, so you can see uh, the different training sets. Um, then whether a language model was used for the decoding or not, and the blue score and word error rate on uh, the different sets. So for blue score, it's not that we're 100 times better, but that I <laughs> normalized it to um, between 0 and 1, as opposed to uh, 0 and 100, as opposed to 0 and 1. Um, so you can see that a language model helps in any case. Um, that models trained on SDS 200 uh, perform well on their own test set and also on the SNF test set, which 
is from the same domain um, for the Swiss Parliament's corpus as such. Still, this training data alone performs best. And then uh, with the combined training data, it, it's not the best on each individual set, but I apologize, this slide is missing the averages. It's basically the, the best for the average across all test sets. Um, and then the results by dialect of only the models with language model. Um, we can see that Zurich and central Switzerland are the, um, the easiest. So th that would be the blue scores on here. Um, they are the easiest ones to recognize and Wallis is hardest and most models, for most models, I think the trend is, is very similar. So now a bit more about um, this project, end-to-end -end low resource speech translation for Swiss German dialects, founded, uh, funded by the Swiss National Foundation. So the setting is that there are seven distinct dialect regions, so Basel, Bern, Grisens, Central Switzerland, Eastern Switzerland, Wallis, and Zurich. And um, the main question is how can we actually recognize all the dialects well, including dialects for which we have little data? Because as those of you who speak Swiss German know, the, the dialect landscape is extremely fragmented and we will always find speakers or dialects, valleys somewhere that we don't have data for or we don't have much data for, and the question is what's, what's the best way to proceed? Um, so basically the stage that the project is at is the data collection. And the test set has been collected already, so that's seven times four hours with all the same prompts or sentences for each dialect. And then the training data will consist of seven times 45 hours, and the vocabulary or prompts are gonna differ for the dialects. And just to give you um, an idea of what will be investigated in the project, so I, I just put some of the research questions here, for example, how much does the performance vary between the dialects and why? That's also an interesting question, like what kind of uh, properties of the data, what kinds of linguistic structures, what, whatever we can, we, we can find, what's behind uh, the differences. How good is a dialect specific system on a, another dialect? Uh, should we build a separate system for each dialect or should we build a general system and how would we best go about this? Is it possible to transfer training data from one dialect to another? Or is it also possible to, can we define like a set of, of data that we absolutely need to get going on a dialect? And how can we deal with dialect specific vocabulary? Because this is probably the main difference between the dialects. The grammar can be different, but maybe not as much as, as the vocabulary will be. So if you find these questions exciting, and or if you would just like to support our research, uh, there are still speakers needed. I put the cantons here. Um, I think we're mostly looking for male speakers for uh, the first five cantons. And then for Grisons, we're mostly looking for females. And this is a paid job. So um, you will be reimbursed 110 francs for something like two and a half hours of effort. And you can just let me know if you fit this profile and you would like to help. It would be much appreciated. Now for a brief outlook and summary um, on the campaign side for the project. Uh, we are planning a Teams competition. So that's another kind of uh, gamification and competition element. And the idea is the participants can form arbitrary teams. So if they're in an association together, they can team up or if they're colleagues or friends or whatever, uh, they can do that. And as in the last edition, there will be prizes and we are hoping to launch this in the autumn of this year and get a bit closer to the third zero <laughs> on our goal. Um, and in the systems development, I'm really sorry, these, these were like funky, funny emojis and 
yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look so attractive now in the slides. Um, one thing that I think FHNW uh, already started and that Yannick commented on is a, uh, a more detailed error analysis to see what where we actually still go wrong and whether maybe this is different by dialect and what we can do about it. Um, another avenue to go is obviously to throw a larger model at it. So that would be XLSR 2 billion, um, which is, is still a challenge in terms of compute infrastructure. Uh, the use of additional data, what we currently have or are planning to obtain are more uh, parliament data sets and also the, the SNF uh, training set that we are compiling. And another challenge, because these models are trained on very short snippets, is how to accurately transcribe longer audio files. So that's, that's ongoing work as well, and it's especially tricky because of the translation step. So for, for languages, or if you go from same language audio to same language transcript, you can more or less chop up the audio, transcribe the different segments, and then stitch it back together if you go about the chopping in a smart way. But for uh, Swiss German, that's not been so easy. And then a few lessons from the project. So I think many people care about dialects, but that doesn't really mean they contribute data. We got a lot of nice emails uh, from the population about, oh, do you know, in this old folks home, there is this person who sp still speaks this really original dialect. And like the topic really touches a lot of people. They recommended books and whatnot. Um, but that didn't translate into huge participation, let's say. And now with the SNF project, I think one of the learnings is also even if you pay them, it's still not that easy. And as I already said, the gamification really helped. And I hope I've been able to show that SDS 200 is a valuable data set and more exciting things are still to come. Thank you. So we have five minutes time for questions. <laughs> So the SNF project, Swiss National Found, uh, isn't this, this from the ETH Swiss Style Corpus um, made a technology center, which was backed by the whole big media companies like Tamedia, or is it another project, the SNF? No, it's a different project. It ah. involves um, the Zurich University of Applied Sciences, the FHNW, and the University of Zurich. So the, no, the Swiss Style project is... Um, that's the one about about voice agents. That is that focused mainly on, on text to speech, I believe. It was in the first phase, at least. Yeah, it was a bigger project, also where the big media companies in Switzerland came together, and then actually the Media Technology Center, as a part of ETH, mm -hmm. wanted to develop a Swiss Alexa. And they realized mm -hmm. speech to text is just so complicated and kind of make, make it work. So they concentrated on the text to speech part. That's why I ask uh, because it's all about the data. It's the whole problem, and now. Data is the problem. How do you want to find the error patterns, what you mentioned? Because I'm actually doing the same at the moment somehow. In general, how can I find, let's say, the out of vocabulary words, which are not a language model for whatever language you're using? It's not just Swiss German, so all. And what he actually showed now, um, because he used uh, Zerstören, but uh, the other time he used Kaputtmache. So it's also an incentive for you. What I'm a bit doing is how to find the error pattern ah, in a bag of words. So I have a noun, object, verb, or whatever. And so the words are words you can exchange. And so you can exchange the Störung with Kaputt machen. And so I actually construct synthetically a language space and check how good is the speech to text to find the out of vocabulary. But maybe we have some words how you want to find the error pattern. Well, it's not something I personally am going to do, I don't think. Um, <laughs> but we have, I think, people coming at it from, from different angles. We also have Larissa here in the audience, who is a linguist, who is really going to look into linguistic patterns. So if this is, and she's working on it from the University of Zurich side. So this is, if the linguistic uh, patterns are something that interest you, then she's the one to talk to, I think. I'm also really looking forward to, to the results on that. Um, yeah, and other than that, I, I can't really comment on, on specific plans, I don't think. Um, 
regarding uh, recruiting uh, speakers, uh, did you also try to approach large companies in Switzerland that would promote that project within their own staff? Yes, we did. It's one thing I didn't mention, but um, we did that. And I think out of the 50 companies that we contacted, maybe two or three kind of forwarded it. But I don't think it's enough to you know, send an email to your group or your internal mailing list or whatever. I think what you would need in order for this to succeed is somebody who really pushes the project internally. And we didn't have that in this case. Maybe in the second round, we will be more successful with that. Did you use PDF or a PowerPoint such that your emojis are not showing? Yeah, it's PowerPoint. Ah, OK. <laughs> Maybe a PDF would have worked better. <laughs> We have time for one question. I think that your project is uh, really well with this code they have now replaced with the code center something as well. Mm -hmm. Let me say we, we tried, um, and we will probably try again. There's many companies we talked to and a large interest. And again, in, in terms of actual actual collaboration, it's it's been a bit more difficult. Usually, yes. I mean, it's, it's the problem with all these. That's why we, we said we want to create a data set that can live in the public domain because there's so many data sets. Just recently, I was talking to people who do um, research in, in psychology and media reception, and they record all these interviews and they transcribe them, but they told me we have thousands of hours, but they cannot be shared. So it, it quickly turns into a legal kind of right. nightmare. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Okay. So we have three or four minutes. We have three or four minutes to change session and to prepare the next speaker.